Okay, so. Welcome to the Veil Matters podcast, brought to you by Evesham Notice Board Group. We will explore topics from local politics and economy to education and events dedicated to Evesham, Pershaw and Broadway. We will also feature stories from everyday people to learn about their experiences and get a better understanding of how our community is changing. So join us. Let's talk about the things that matter in the Vale. Hello and welcome to episode eight. This is the business of beauty in the Vale. We'd just like to ask you if you could please support this podcast by subscribing and sharing with your friends and family. This will help us grow. We are a free community podcast and you'll also be supporting the guests and the businesses that are our guests on the show. And uh, you'll also get notifications of new episodes when they drop. So yeah, if you could subscribe, that'd be great. So on today's episode, I'm going to be completely honest. I know nothing about this business. <laughs> um, I have done my makeup for it though. I hope they're impressed. I don't know if you can see. Um, but I am lucky enough to be a customer of this business, to these businesses, um, and many in the Vale as well. So let's talk about the beauty and hair industry. We are lucky enough to be home to many hair and beauty salons in Evesham, Pershaw and Broadway. And it makes this makes it a very competitive marketplace. And, and it's a testament to any entrepreneur in this industry who's running a business in this area. So, like I said, it's, it's not the easiest business to run. It's highly competitive and there's always a need to keep up with the skills, up to date with trends and market changes. And then there's also the customers to keep them happy and to keep them feeling and looking fabulous. So let's chat with three local, talented, well-established hair and beauty entrepreneurs. Whether you're in the industry or not, we hope this conversation gives you an insight into one of Evesham's most popular businesses, the hair and beauty. So with today we've got Lucy Fletcher from the Beauty and Laser Shack in Hinton on the Green. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and we've got Gareth Martin from Iconic Salons in Evesham Pershaw and also Sutton Caulfield. Hi. Yeah. And then we've got Vicky Baker, which a lot of people will know, well-known, established uh, mobile hair and makeup artist and also a local Mary Can Say K consultant. Hello. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, I hope you enjoy what we've got in store. <laughs> so just some, uh, some quick fire questions. And uh, we'll just go around and ask you randomly. So, if you could choose to only have one from a glam team, so would you choose hair or would you choose makeup? For me, yeah. it, it would definitely be hair. Hair's my background. Definitely hair. Yeah. If I you choose to, hair I or makeup, I have to choose hair because I'm rubbish at doing hair. Really? Yeah. yeah. It, well, I okay. yeah, I'm doing my own hair. Yeah. 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 For me, probably makeup because I adore makeup and I don't do anything with my hair, even though I'm a hairdresser. Yeah. <laughs> See, there you go. It surprises me. So, if you could be employed or self employed? Self employed. Self employed. Self employed. Ditto. This is no surprise, really, is it? <laughs> and if you're looking at the hair and beauty historically over the years, which era would you choose? So, would you choose 50s, 60s, or 70s? 70s. Why? Fun. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. Glam. Like the, the <laughs> yeah. glitter. And glitter, the, the colours. Yeah. Yeah. So what about you? I think I'd have to go with 1950s Art Deco, glamour. Beautiful, like Marilyn Monroe yeah. sort of style. Yeah, like same as Vicky, 70s because it's always fun in the makeup and it starts to get a little bit real colourful. Glam. And yeah, yeah, definitely. Excellent. So are you guys feeling, I know that you're not hairdresser Lucy, but what's your thoughts on the perm that's returned, apparently? Is that true? Has it returned? It returns about every year, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they keep trying to bring it back, don't they? <laughs> it never materialises. No. <laughs> no. So, can you name a business in Evesham that you love? That you, you, you want to share some love with today, with our followers? Is that too difficult? You don't want to pick out one. I've, I have, I have shocked them all, guys. They don't know what to say. I'm gonna go yeah. brew bear because they make me a fabulous coffee every morning. Lovely. Oh yeah, that's great. Um, 
Yeah, they are good. Brie Bear is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brie yeah. Bear. I think I'll go with that as well. Yeah. Mm. I love what they're doing. And they're yeah. This is the second really time he's been mentioned on a podcast. Yeah, yeah he's doing, doing well. something right. He's then, doing well. they? Yeah. So, asparagus or cabbage? Asparagus. Definitely asparagus. <laughs> Definitely. This is like to see how <laughs> how Asian you are. Oh really, yeah. Isn't it? yeah. And if you say it? you've passed the test, guys. Phew. You've passed the test. <laughs> How, can you name, I don't know if we can, but can you tell us anyone that you've done famous hair or beauty treatments for? What's the most famous person? Agatha Razor. Really? Yeah. That was, a, that was a story about hair salons as well, wasn't it? Yeah, me and Janelle were based in the book. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I've listened to some of those, it's lovely. She used to come twice a week, every week. Yeah? Yeah, lovely lady. So she did, it was a TV show as well, wasn't it? Wasn't it a TV series? Brilliant, I love it. It's really good. So I thought it was just an uh, okay, radio. If you, need to, if you haven't seen it, you need to watch that. I really haven't watched it. I've listened to it. So someone sent me the recording that, they, that they've done, but I will do. Lucy, anyone? I know you've been on TV, so. Yeah, not actually with um, beauty, no. Like other industries, like with the horses, but not through beauty. Yeah. What about you, Vicky? Not that I can think of. No. But... All the people in the Vale are famous to me. Ah, <laughs> there you go. There you are. Sort of hustling her for her Always. Voices, isn't she? <laughs> so, we're going to go on to our first guest. Lucy is an award winning beauty therapist and skincare technician. Lucy's from the Beauty Shack and the Laser Lounge studio located in Hinton the Green. This lady eats, sleeps, and thinks about her industry most of the time. Well, that's when she's not been a mummy, wife, or involved massively with her other passion, which is the echo. <laughs> I knew I was going to do this equestrian, oh, yeah. equestrian industry. Thank you. <laughs> and she's always upgrading her skills in the beauty industry and striving to stay on top with the latest current trends. Also speaking personally, I know Lucy really cares about what she does and the impact that beauty treatments and a pamper time can make to her clients and their overall well-being. In fact, Lucy uh, often flies the flag for mental health issues and th- is actually going to throw us up out of a plane <laughs> in May. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. in May. She's thrown herself 10,000 feet. You nutter. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, to raise funds for Mental Health Foundation. That's really great, Lucy. And Exciting. She yeah. can sponsor Lucy as well. I'm yes, sure please, we need I share. still need sponsors. So, she needs yeah. sponsorship for that as well. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah. it's really exciting. I'm I'm really keen on supporting Mental Health Foundation. It's um, it's a charity, you know, it's a charity that's close to home, and um, yeah, do anything I can to support yeah. it. Really, so yeah, that's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So you, you're no stranger to caring and sharing, and you also was featured. You're a guest on um, this morning. Yeah, this morning, oh, right. uh, talking about Facebook scammers, and you know that. So you just, you know, it just shows how much you care about your community and about what you do and your online presence as well um so we we've mentioned quite a lot there but you've been in this industry for 14 years and you've had some salons as well you've had a salon in Evesham you've had them close uh, but you've come back for more <laughs> that didn't stop you did it, it and this, stop this me, is no. a testament to a good entrepreneur tell us why what made you come back you've just had passion. a salon yeah, it's passion it really is and that's what the drive is with any self-employed person really if you haven't got the passion to do what you want to do then it's not going to work so yeah. um yeah i love it and the older i've got the more i've realized that um doing you know doing what you love is really really important and making yeah. other people happy and feel good about themselves gives you that drive too so yeah it's kind of it's like an ongoing circle if you make someone happy that makes you feel good and then you want to do make someone else feel happy and then so it's yeah it has a knock-on effect that's really good, isn't it? And so, I mean, what do you think the uh, the key is then to being a successful beautician? Um, dedication to what you do. Yeah. Being prepared to work the hours as well, um, which is something that you don't tend to get a lot of these days. A lot of people don't want to put the hours in, um, but it's important. You're not, you can't be self-employed and just work nine till five. It doesn't work like that. Um, so yeah, I think that's the main thing is, is having that drive to do it and not be sort of on the, uh, you know, 
on the nine till five aspect of it. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of people think when you run your own business is that you can just, when you shut the doors and when you stop doing those treatments, those beauty treatments, you can just go home and have dinner and really then you've got to run the business, the actual, the mechanics of making that business grow and work. Um, so I see that you're always expanding your skill set and you, you, you've you recently completed a course. Was there a latest skin yeah, care course? Yeah, skin blemish removal. So I'm, I've got a bit of a medical background. I used to be a veterinary nurse um, and that side of things really fascinates me. Um, so with beauty moving forward the way it is, um, there's a lot of demand these days for more aesthetic type treatments. Um, so I've done my laser treatments, so I do hair removal, tattoo removal, um, birthmarks, um, any sort of skin blemishes really. Um, so I've done this advanced blemish removal course now, um, which is just fab and I've had a lot of customers just wanting that done. Um, mm. And again, I just love doing it. I'm, you know, I get so excited mm. when I see somebody's book to have a skin tag removed or some milieu or something like that. It's just, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I suppose it's one of those, it's making somebody happy if you've got something on you that's, you know, a blemish or a mark. And even maybe no one can see that that confidence, yeah, lack of knocking confidence it can give you. So uh, to have that Absolutely. Treatment. Yeah, I had somebody the other day and you said, oh, it's just changed my life. The fact that I've just got rid of this one little mark on their face. Yeah. It's like you've actually changed my life and that's just wow. means so much. That's that. so rewarding, yeah. isn't it? It is. That's yeah. that's uh work, that's real reward to get yeah. that. So what do you think at the moment are the hottest trends in the beauty industry for your oh, what you're doing? So gosh. you're in the skin tag, but is there anything else? Generally. Else? Yeah. The lashes and lashes, lots of lashes. <laughs> <laughs> Never ends. Um, nails. Is that the, still. the lashes? Individual that you, lashes. Individual they seem lashes. to get thicker and longer every month that goes by, don't they? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, ugh, fillers, Botox, that kind of thing, and people are moving towards that. And it's. I think people are being too casual about that. Um, yeah. They are going to standardise a lot of the regulations in 2026. Um, because Kate, you could go out and do a, a Botox filler course and wow. offer it to put somebody tomorrow. I don't think I should, though. I don't think so. <laughs> if you do, I will be knocking on your door, Katie, because it's not. But yeah, I just think, you know, there's, there's, it's things like that are too easy. You know, they, they are going to make sure that people are medical and um, that they know, you know, it's people that know what they're doing. Um, but yeah, it's definitely pushing towards that side of things. So, um, yeah, I still get the pedicures and the manicures and things like yeah. that, but it's it's changing a lot, and it has changed a lot in about the last ten years, yeah. I think. Because you've actually trained people as well, haven't you? Yeah. In the beauty in, in the beauty industry, you've had to train. Yeah. And you know, we we see you from even from notice board's point of view, we do look to you for advice sometimes on beauticians who are joining. Have they yeah. got the right qualifications? Can they do? Yeah, what they definitely. Do? But that's because of your background. Yes. Yeah. Well. So I've taught at colleges and um, did my teaching course and assessors qualification um, so and standards are important and again in the industry beauty um, I'm quite you know if you're passionate about something you want it to be right yeah so um, yeah I'm sure a lot of my students hated me because I was a bit picky um, <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a couple that have got salons and Eve shows that are probably thinking yeah <laughs> but that's a good thing in your industry though yeah that's why with Gareth I suppose when you're training hairdressers as well you have to be you have to be like that you have to be yeah quite, you have to you know it's important you're taking care of someone's hair and skin it's yeah. you know it's, it's I think it's a, a scary job um so now you're in your salon again so you had your salon in Evesham and now you're working, uh, you've got a lovely clinic in Hinton on the Green. Yeah. We've been out and checked it out and you do laser tattoo removal and many other treatments. So it's not just yeah. nails and no. it's not, when I say just, I mean just is not minimising that, but there's a lot more to the services now. And I think that's what we're finding in your industry, isn't it? That the, the, That's why we said it's forever moving and changing and evolving and you have to constantly upgrade your skills. So what's your favourite treatment? What do you like doing the most? 
that much from you, Paul. You like this? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> when customers are giving you feedback like that, so you I change know. their lives. It's a no brainer, isn't it? It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. So, sorry, guys. I'm just going to interrupt for a minute just to say a big thanks to our sponsors who, without them, this podcast would not be possible. So, we are proudly sponsored by Howden Insurance. They were previously a plan. Um, you can visit them. They're our local insurance provider and they have real people in a real office on the high street. <laughs> so uh, you can visit them in person and get a quote for your home, vehicle, pet, travel, life or now rural insurance. They're on number six, Vine Street. And you can visit them online too. And also we mustn't forget to say a big thank you to Wallace House and the team here for the podcast equipment and the room. This is available for all the community to hire this podcast equipment. You can use this yourself and create your own and you can do that for just a small donation to Wallace House so get in touch with them. So that's that bit over with. Thank you to the sponsors again. So, Vicky. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So Vicky's been in the industry for 30 years. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Little Vicky, while. <laughs> Vicky is a serial entrepreneur, true to the core. I think if we were a sticker rock and we cut you in the middle, that's what we'd say. You reckon? Okay. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> with like a little lipstick in there as well. Definitely with a lipstick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Vicky Baker is mobile hair and beauty artist plus a Mary Kay consultant. And in the past, Vicky has owned three salons in a veil, so she's not a stranger to running um, the retail side of things as well. And you have been through some tough economic and challenging times through the market crashes, bridge closures and COVID and all these things, you know, that's that's a challenge to go through. But like all good business people, Vicky's passion and drive has brought her back. And, and for the last five years, Vicky has uh, rebalanced her work, your life. Um, balance <clears throat> by offering the hair and makeup services to you at home. She's completely mobile. So Vicky uh, is also is is she's basically she's in the business of making people look fabulous, and that's from the hair to the makeup, so weddings and special occasions. And uh, you're you're a glam team, aren't you? You're a one person that. glam team. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly we love glam what I am. <laughs> yeah. We need a glam team. And you're also a specialist, and for the last five years you've been doing this, as a Mary Kay consultant yeah. in this region. So you're the regional manager in this area. You've I got, am, yeah. You know. And uh, so that that's Vicky. There's a lot, and there's more, mm. actually, for all of you that haven't been able to get in. But that's that's the, the, the crux of it. So why do you do it, Vicky? Why do you get 30 years? <laughs> why do I do it? Because I love it. Yeah. I love making people feel fabulous. You know, the amount of times I've had, whether it's been in the salon or whether I go to the home, the amount of times where they'll walk out or I walk out and they go, oh, I feel so much better. I look so much better. Yeah. If it breeds that bit of empowerment and confidence, yeah. why wouldn't I want to do it? Yeah. yeah. Simple as that. So it's a bit like a, a therapy for yourself as well as in this industry, because when you've made someone else feel good, in turn, that makes you yeah. feel good. So yeah. that's, that's really nice. So, but... What I want to know is, and this is probably applying to all, all of you, is that how do, you know, whenever I've had a treatment done or I go to the salon and have my hair done and my nails done, the, the staff are always so happy and they talk to you and you're like, how, you know, surely they must have bad days. I'm no. very good at masking <laughs> it. It's just stuck there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's really clever that you can, how do you do I've, it? I've always said I'm an actress. I should be on the telly <laughs> because yeah. you know what? I have many a bad days, but I'm still there smiling. And we're an actress, we're an actor. That's what we do. Yeah. And you, but when you're doing those beauty treatments, as Lucy said, you know, you're making people feel good. And part of that process isn't just doing their hair mm -hmm. or doing their makeup; it's talking to them. Yeah. I was actually saying this to my daughter the other day. I said, "There's um, there's a key word: beauty therapist." Yeah. And you are. You are a therapist. Therapist, yeah. yeah. They come to you with their problems yeah. and they want to offload. And Absolutely. Yeah, I've them. said I'm a counsellor. Yeah. I'm a part counsellor. Definitely. Yeah. The things I've heard in the past from affairs to, I don't know, whatever's gone on, Ooh, you know. Tell I us know, I know. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> <another Exciting. podcast. laughs> but you do, you hear it all, oh, literally everything. You are the person there that they suddenly think they can overload everything on you. But that's cool. It's really yeah. interesting. <laughs> Plus, you're only as good as your last treatment, so you've got to keep on your game. You've got to keep.
keep performing and give yeah. the best service possible mm. to, to all of your clients. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I don't know how you keep it up. I, I wear my heart on my sleeve. So if I was having a bad day and somebody said to me, how are you? A client said, how are you? I'd be in floods. I'd be on the floor. There wouldn't be any hair done or any makeup. I'd be on the floor. So hats off to the uh, to all the people in the beauty and hair industry for you, Vicky, for doing this for 30 years. How many people have you made happy? How many clients? I should have counted from the start. Obviously, I yeah. didn't. God only knows. <laughs> so have you always had your three beauty salons? They were uh, on the high street, yeah. and you had one on the... Yes, opposite the old Aldi. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I've had those. I The last salon I decided, with COVID, I, one positive thing that came out of that for me was, actually, my family need me, my kids need me. So yeah. I was like, actually, that's going to stop, because I couldn't run both together. So, yeah, my kids really shouted at me like this is lovely you being home so now it means I can do all the things I love doing which I'll always continue doing mm -hmm. but I can be there for my children and that's why I chose to go mobile in the end yeah so you've got the best of both, best worlds. both worlds for me you're still doing what you do, love you're still Absolutely. running your own business you'll never stop me doing it yeah <laughs> never stop me doing it don't think we should well maybe I don't think we who knows <laughs> No, I don't think we should. I mean, recently, you, you, because you've also put on some events for the community, haven't you? Some yeah. well-being events, which have been yeah. lovely here at Wallace House as well. And yes, it was at Wallace House, wasn't it? Um, yeah. I did a wedding fair, yes, up at the football club. Yeah. I, the Unitarian, did Christmas fairs. I just where I can promote what I do and get other people involved in that. That's yeah. really what I want to do. It's empowering yeah. other people as yeah. well as yeah. absolutely. And those involved. smaller businesses that yeah. aren't really noticed. <clears throat> You know, that should be. So you're so, so good at that, Vicky. You're so good at promoting yourself. Bless you. I'm, that's my weakness. Yeah, it's a different it's a oh. challenge, isn't it? Yeah. It is a challenge. Because Scheduling. You don't, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> you don't like to talk about yourself though. Business owners, entrepreneurs in the oil mm. industry, they, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's tough to champion yourself to be that voice that says, mm. I am actually good at what I do. Yeah. And with you guys, that's why you're here, you know, that's why we've asked you to come on here mm. and do this because you've been doing it for so many years. We know you've got the experience and, and the knowledge. So, what advice would you, what's the best piece of advice you've been given? I'll start with that one. What's the best piece of advice in your, mm. for your industry? That's a good one. <laughs> oh, need the brain the cogs are going um i mean or it could be what advice would you give to somebody coming into the industry don't give up it's a lot harder than you think people yeah. think it's a very glamorous industry it's hard like you said we've got to smile all day you know we've got to be happy we've got to be on our feet all day they're long hours you know don't yeah. give up if it's something you really want to do stick at it because yeah. many do, because they find it's a lot harder than they think. Yeah. They keep going. So there's, there, hopefully there's somebody who's thinking about doing this mm. and they're going to come into it and think, you know, it's good advice, because like you said, it's it's harder than mm. people realise. When you were growing up, what did you want to be? Hairdresser. You wanted to be a hairdresser as well? <laughs> yeah, always. Oh. I'll tell you the story, right? The reason why is when I was about eight or nine, so my daughter's youngest daughter's age, my dad, in those years, didn't go off away to work that much. Um, but my dad went to America, and he came back with probably one of the first girls' worlds, you know, with the hair you pull out and you oh, can what? cut it and the style model. it. Like yeah, the, the head, head yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. I remember those. There you go. Well, I had one of those, and I still now blame my dad. So it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> you your came home with that. Vicky? Yeah, here I am with the dad. rollers and <laughs> curling it. Oh, those rollers, you just knotted, didn't they? Yeah. Really like yeah. <laughs> And then you suddenly realise you cut it, that, oh, it doesn't grow back. Yes, that's <laughs> yes. what happened to me. That's probably why my hairdressing career didn't take there off. There you go. <laughs> because I cut it all off, and I was, my, my mum was like, well, now you can't do anything with it, can you? <laughs> and you got those little lipsticks that come with it as well, that yes. didn't have anything Stop in it. it. The <laughs> blue eyeshadow. Yeah. Yeah. That was literally up here, <laughs> on the eyebrows. <laughs> but yeah, that's why. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I think I'm pretty sure that's why. Always so it's to. always been in your blood Completely. to do this yeah. as well. Yeah. And what do you enjoy most about what you do? Again, empowering people, making yeah. them feel good, making them feel confident. The yeah. amount of times, like whether it's makeup or doing the hair, and they've walked out and suddenly they're taller, 
and they are you can see in them they're suddenly confident and they want to show themselves off so yeah I've done the job Aww. have fun that's <laughs> lovely have a good night have, have a, a good, good night go for it go on off you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's amazing because you do makeup sessions as well don't you yes. you teach people how to do it themselves yeah so do that's tutorials it. yeah skincare sessions as well because it's so important and i think it's something again about self-care again mental health it's about looking after ourselves self-care you know, doing those little things for ourselves that are going to make us feel better. Mm. And if it's a little bit of cream on our face or a little bit of eyeliner or mascara or wafting our hair somehow, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's going to make us feel good. <clears throat> really do you do important. men as well? Yeah. Yeah. You help I men do. with their skincare. Yeah. 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 Do anything. They can make up if they want as well. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so going on to the high street and... The salons and Evesham as a whole. We've got a lot of beauty businesses in Evesham, haven't we? Mm. I, I had a look earlier. I think there was like 20, over 20 I counted. And I know I was missing a lot. And that was just in Evesham. So that's not including all the villages on the outside and all of those things. Um, <clears throat> so I, I'm just, you know, I just, I can, I can't imagine how, as, as a business owner myself, having that many competitors that I've got to compete against. So I am interested to learn how you navigate this I don't ever think of this competition to you because there's enough people. Like... There's enough people, isn't there? Yeah. We've got all these villages, you know, we've got a big enough town. There's enough people to go um, around for us all, isn't there? I don't think one person can't please everybody. No. Yeah. So they'll, yeah, that's true. you know, there's, yeah. somebody might go to Vicky for their makeup yeah. because they like the way Vicky does it, or they'll yeah. come to me because they like the way I do yeah. it, but it's just, yeah, so I don't think it's like comp yeah. healthy competition. Yeah. Every, everybody yeah. offers slightly different things <clears throat> yeah. as well. So, Three. yeah. And yeah. people make a match with a salon. A, a salon that people come to us wouldn't necessarily go to Vicky, mm. and Vicky's clients mm. wouldn't necessarily come to us. So yeah. I think it's an individual. Yeah. Completely. We well, have clients that stick with you as well, don't you? Mm. You know, if you get yeah. a, a hairdresser or a beautician or someone that you start to trust, mm. you'll stay with them as well. Yeah. But it's nice that you guys can work together as well as a business community mm. that there's not that you know it, it's professional I isn't it I think that's important though, especially somewhere like yeah. Eastern that's small get on with your competitors yeah, yeah. Like, surely it's better yeah because yeah. yeah. you can share information Absolutely. especially if there's a rogue trader out there or yeah. somebody doing something that's mm. you're getting clients coming in with burnt hair or you know bad yeah. skin from mm. treatments you can share that with each other which is good <laughs> that's really extreme don't listen to me <laughs> there's no salads out there do you? <laughs> Anyway, so I'll move swiftly <laughs> over to Gareth. Gareth, the Evesham Hair and Beauty Boss, Gareth Martin, owner of not one, not two, but four salons. Gareth has been in this industry all of his life. Hairdressing is in his blood, literally, from being around his mum's salon in from when he was learning new skills to today in his own career, he's still learning new skills to, to help grow. Yeah, his business as well. He was voted best boss in Evesham last year at the Love Evesham Awards, and he's also he's also and in in his industry he's a multi award winner around the UK for his salons and for the service and the colours and all the treatments that you provide. Gareth owns Iconic Hair and uh, Hairdressers and Barber, also Iconic Beauty and Evesham High Street plus in Pershaw as well and there's also a salon in Sutton Caulfield so he has an army of hair and beauty technicians a real glam squad um, and Gareth prides himself uh, on his uh, that he has a team that they are not staff as, as we, we talked earlier and, and you know that's not how you see um, and, and they're more like family to you and I think that's why you were the best boss because this is how you treat your team and we've seen that at the Love Evesham Awards you were like a family you were, or the atmosphere around you guys was brilliant um, and that's probably why people like coming into the salon as well so what advice would you give to someone looking to open another salon don't do it <laughs> Just be, just be good at what you do and know what you want to offer and stick to your guns and follow your dream. Yeah. Um, and think big. Yeah. Start off, I, I just started off with a small salon and it just naturally progressed. I, yeah. never, I never meant to have multiple salons. They just <laughs> evolved. <laughs> and I'd wake up one day and say, oh, let's open pair shop. And yeah. that's, that's how mine happened. They just naturally evolved yeah i didn't intend to do it 
But that's because you love what you do so much. And you've been doing this, like you said, since you were 16. Yeah. I, I think I think you've got to love what you do. And in hairdressing and beauty, it isn't a job. It is a passion and yeah. you do really enjoy it. Okay, the wages aren't always necessarily, you don't earn the big money like solicitors and lawyers. But we are passionate and enjoy what we do. So we're not going home at the end of the day saying, oh no, we've had this or that. We, we love it. Yeah, yeah. So how do you manage a big team? With help. With, and, with Prosecco. Parties. <laughs> yeah, plenty, plenty of Prosecco. <laughs> to be honest, I, I have to say I've got the best team ever. Everybody knows their jobs. Yeah. They get on. So they don't need managing as such. Everybody gets on. We know what we've got to do. We deliver and we go home. Yeah. So. It's, I mean, it's... um. You know, like I said, at the Usual Awards night, we see you all together, and it was like a real family. Like, they were all your sisters, and, you know... To be, to be honest, I always employ on personality over skill set. You can teach, you can teach a skill, but you cannot teach personality. Mm. So That's a really good way of looking always, at it, isn't it? Everybody always, always comments on how nice it is in the atmosphere, how everybody gets on, and we genuinely all get on really, really well. So what would you say are the core skills of a hairdresser? What do they need? What what makes a good hairdresser? Being able to chat. <laughs> <laughs> Communication skills and understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And what about listening as well? Because yeah. obviously the clients. Yeah, 100%. You've got to listen to what, what the client's needs. Yeah. And then be able to deliver. Obviously, you've got to deliver. Yeah. The yeah. expectation. So what drives you to keep going, to keep, you know, because you've got these salons and you've got a good team of people, but you're still there in the salon and you're managing and you're continuing to, you know, keep driving what you do. What make, what drives you to do it? I love all the different aspects. I love cutting hair, I love colouring, so that's good. But I also really enjoy numbers and numbers tell a story and I like following the numbers. So like the business side and internet side and even COVID was an opportunity to understand how websites worked and I, I just grasped, I, I just love learning. So yeah. I'm constantly um, listening to books. I've got two business coaches. Wow. Um, so yeah, I just want to do better. Yeah, so, and that's something we touched on earlier, wasn't it, about marketing and that's not, you know, that's something that you have to strive, you have to keep doing in, because it's competitive in your industry and, you know, it, you're trained to be in the industry that you're in, you're not trained, a, a, a salon owner isn't trained to be a marketing I think these specialist. days, you, you're not just a hairdresser, you need to be a social media expert, yeah. you need to be all these yeah. different yeah. hats. It is so hard. I think I will say for you know people like Tesco's, they've got their marketing department, they've got their IT department, but as small independent businesses, we have to wear all them hats and, and juggle them. And it is hard work, but yeah. also rewarding. Yeah. 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 So, um, what, what do you feel about Evesham at the moment, the high street? Are you, you happy on the high street and is it going well? I think lots of people dish Evesham, but I think Evesham is a beautiful town, the river. I think we could we could all do a little bit more yeah. um, within the community to big Evesham up. Um, but I'm really passionate about Evesham. I like my businesses all around here. The clients are beautiful lovely people well they're beautiful after coming to see you because <laughs> you've got the beauty and you've got the hair oh you've got both yeah. <laughs> like vicky <clears throat> vicky's mobile You're, you've got the two salons on the high street which is great isn't it how long have you been on the high street now i think it's 14 years hair i think we've just celebrated wow. our 10 wow. 10th birthday in beauty so we've been around we've seen lots of different changes yeah. Um, and I think the footfall has fallen on the high street, but then you need to be a destination. You need to give people a reason to come in yeah. and mm -hmm. get in your hair and your makeup or your beauty treatments. Yeah. You can't do them on the internet, and I'm sure you're not ever going to be able to. So we are a destination. <laughs> that would be, that would be amazing. We are. It's like the app I used on TikTok the other day, and it put makeup on me, and I was like, oh. wow, how did it do that? I, I wish this could just happen all the time, and I didn't have to put my makeup on or do my hair. It'd be all right if you were sat in front of a camera all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, what advice would you give to somebody 
looking at getting into the hairdressing industry? I personally, I think anybody that wants to do hair or beauty, <clears throat> I think the, the the colleges and things are good, but I think you've learned far more working in a salon. Yeah. If you can start off doing a Saturday job to see whether you like it, because, you know, it is hard work. You stood on your feet longer hours. And I think if you train within a salon, you get salon standard, not college standard. And I know some college tutors are going to be listening totally and telling me. <laughs> no, off, no, I totally agree. I, I totally think agree. anybody that trains in a salon, the salon want them to be good and on the floor. So yeah. they work no, harder. Customer yeah. service, isn't yeah. it? You don't get that from a college as Yeah, because they're, they're the st- other students normally yeah. aren't they? So you don't get the real experience of the salon. So, so is it an apprenticeship people can do at the moment? Yeah, so there's, lot, there's lots of different ways of doing it. You can do like one day at college, four days in the salon, or you could do um, full time in the salon and like your college shooter would come in, in to see you yeah. and assess, assess your work. So yeah. I, yeah. I think personally that way works better for me because I like to do the teaching. And you, you pride yourself on when they qualify that they they you just see them blossom and it, it's really quite endearing that you've taught them that skill and yeah. then they fly with it yeah and uh, yeah that's so rewarding mm. to see that progress to see someone train and come up through the through the ranks through the ranks yeah so, and, and I suppose a lot of hairdressers and beauticians you know each other in Evesham as well because you've mm. all maybe trained together at some point or worked together at it's some a very point. small town everybody yeah. knows yeah. everyone's name yeah. so yeah. I don't know their face but, yeah. but you know <laughs> that's what it's yeah, I've got two, two of my students that I can think of have got salons in Evesham but yes, yes. Oh, okay yeah <laughs> I just think it's gossip central it is. No, it's got to be. <laughs> <laughs> we hear all and say nothing. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a very good saying. I like that. Hear all and say nothing. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I've got to say, I've really enjoyed, and I know a little bit more, but not enough to drive me to go and become a hairdresser or a beautician. <laughs> I think it's an amazing industry. And um, the dedication and the passion that you've all shown, you know, for what you do. Um, and, and just that, you know, you decided to work for yourself as well, that you've taken on this challenge of being an entrepreneur in your industry. It's not easy for me. I've had to learn software, and but you're all doing that as well as, you know, keeping up to date with what you do as well. Um, but yeah, so I think in entrepreneurs in your industry deserve so much credit, maybe even little capes occasionally, especially when you're doing your therapy work with your clients as well. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's, it's a challenge and you've got the responsibility of the care of someone's hair and skin in your hands. You know, that's a big responsibility. I think that's probably underestimated a little bit, that that's a big responsibility that you, you take on and the mental health as well. And you're keeping up to date with new courses and upskilling and uh, and growing as a business. And so and growing as a business in our town and our community in Evesham means so much to us all that we've got you guys. And we just hope this keep continues. And if anyone is listening and wants to um, go into the beauty industry, it's something they can do. So I'd just like to thank you all, our guests today tonight for li- for joining us and uh, for being part of this, and also for you for listening. So please don't forget to subscribe and check out our Feel Good monthly news drop from Evesham Notice Board and plus all the events, what's on, and you can find local businesses like the beauty salons that are here tonight. Um, you can find that on eveshamnoticeboard.co.uk. So thank you, Lucy. Thank you. For coming in. And thank you, Gareth. Thank you. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you. Thanks, guys.